Hello, this is a video tutorial for image processing made by Robotics IIT Kharagpur. In this tutorial, we will cover the concept of color detection. Now, uh, as had been explained uh, right at the beginning in the introductory tutorials, colored images uh, in OpenCV are referred to in particularly two formats, two uh, multi-channel, three-channel formats. They are the BGR or blue-green-red format and the HSV or hue saturation value format. So for each particular pixel of a particular shade, a particular color uh, and a particular appearance, uh, each particular pixel has a distinctive combination of the values of these three channels that you know when combined together lead to give that particular pixel and we had seen how the various formats uh, are, are based on are based on the values of these channels and how the colors vary depending on that uh, we can take a closer look uh, at how color detection works say this is a highly magnified uh, example of a three by three kernel where each uh, cell in this diagram represents a particular pixel and you can see they each have a particular color. Uh, what happens is if we know the value or the range of values of the channel of the pixel we are looking for or if we know something about the values of that pixel then we can utilize certain methods and certain processes that allow us to you know uh, sieve out all pixels that do not come within the range of values we are looking for that do not have values similar to what we are looking for and include only those pixels which do have a value similar to what we are looking for and in the final output image which results due to color detection and that's always a binary image where the, the white portion in the binary image refers to the pixels which have a color in the region of what we are looking for and the black region refers to everything else in such an image uh, only the relevant areas will be uh, mentioned uh, will be depicted and not the others uh, we can get a good idea about the values of this uh, this is microsoft paint by the way so if you go to edit colors here and i'm sure this has already uh, been uh, noticed by our users who have used paint before uh, here you have red green blue and you have three values uh, and none of these can cross 255 or ever become negative and here you have hue sat for saturation and loom for luminosity of course uh, lumin uh, that we use use saturation value just slightly different but the essential concept is same so as you can see as you're moving around this uh, color chart uh, for different colors you see the three values of the different channels are changing so that is the idea uh, that we want to use for color detection right we'll be discussing a couple of methods that are used for color detection first we'll be discussing the most simple one that's using the bgr format a uh, blue green red so the program we'll be discussing will very simply be just looking for the pixels in a particular image that's loaded from file that are mainly red in color uh, so that's what this program will be doing it's a sample program it can be tuned uh, to look for other colors as well now uh, knowing that it's a three channel image bgr pixels which are predominantly red have a high value in the red channel but they have a uh, pretty low value in the blue and green channels because it's not just sufficient to just have a high uh, red value if, the, if they also have a high value for another channel it will become a combination it'll become a secondary or maybe in a, maybe even a tertiary color so that's not what we want we would want only to check for red so uh, for the use of this we'll have to uh, utilize uh, two thresholds min thresh and max underscore thresh uh, so what these do is that uh, basically the min underscore thresh is the minimum threshold above which the channel of our red the red channel has to have its value so its value has to be above that minimum threshold while the max underscore thresh is uh, a threshold for the other two uh, channel values theirs has to be less than this maximum threshold value so that uh, so these two thresholds uh, are, are will are going to be needed in our function so if you have a look here at the syntax which you'll find the documentation and the the code of this function also provided on our, within our resources so uh, color underscore detect underscore bgr there are four par uh, two three parameters the first is the image uh, the ipl image pointer the second is the min uh, threshold and the third is the max threshold uh, so uh, basically inside we do is we first create the variable that will show the result we get the dimensions and we initialize the resultant variable it will have one channel since it will be a binary image as we discussed then we cycle through the image pixel by pixel and then we enforce a particular condition uh, the condition we have decided on the that pixel using on the on that particular pixel and, and its channels so we check that channel number two 
or the third channel is the channel red channel is greater than the minimum threshold value and that the other two channels channel number one and channel number zero for green and blue respectively are less than the maximum threshold values if that is the case then that means that this pixel is a pixel to be considered is a pixel that is of the color uh, we want or uh, we would like so in that case that corresponding pixel in the resultant image is designated as 255 or white Otherwise, the corresponding uh, pixel in the resultant image, resultant image is designated as zero or black. So uh, it's easy to understand how this happens. It just checks pixel by pixel for the values of the pixel uh, of the channels of the pixel, and if they fall in the required ranges, then that is what happens. So to test this out, we'll need to uh, utilize a sample uh, program that utilizes this function basically. So that has already been copied here. If you have a look, it's the color detect BGR function is exactly the same. And in the main function, it's very simple. We just load the image, uh, get the window names, initialize the windows, call the function, and run the function, and display the results. So um, for this particular image, uh, mostly the thresholds are found using trial and error. For this particular image, we found that it was advantageous to have the max threshold for blue and green channels to be 80, and the minimum threshold for the red channel to be 140. So having built this, let's have a look at how this works. Ah, here you have a look. We are looking for the red. So this is a rather well-defined image with basic color. So it would not have been very difficult. We'll see in a while how uh, color direction can be a bit more difficult. So you see uh, almost very clearly the red portions of the picture are marked out almost quite clearly, and that's that. So this is one of the sim the basic and the most basic and simplest means of color direction. Uh, this is particularly used when we're looking for one of the primary colors. However. If it so happens that the color is say something a bit more complex, say something uh, not a primary color, a tertiary or a secondary color, whose, um, whose particular pixel values we know and we need to check for values in and around that range, then we do not use this algorithm. Then uh, we use a slightly different method. We use what is uh, color detection using HSV. Uh, which is preferable to color detection in BGR in general. So this was a very basic algorithm we just discussed. The next one which is slightly more general and slightly more useful is color detection with HSV or hue saturation value. Now wh why does that happen? Take a look at uh, this particular pixel here and this particular pixel. So um, they are basically the very similar in color but the shade or the intensity of one is less uh, is different from the other we had discussed in the introductory tutorial how in hue saturation value hue refers to a particular uh, shade of a color saturation to the intensity and uh, value to the brightness of that so um, hue saturation value color detection is much more useful and uh, in particularly in practical robotic applications because of its tolerance towards varying light conditions and that's what makes it useful so uh, when we wish to detect a color using hue saturation value, it goes something like this. We first need to know what the hue value uh, of, of that color is because every unique color has a unique hue assigned to it. And we need to have a sample value of saturation, uh, a sample reading of saturation and value uh, to be able to uh, work with. Thereafter, we need something called a tolerance, and we need a tolerance both for all three of these. We need something for hue, h tol, which is h tol here. We need something for saturation, which is s tol, and we need something for value, which is v tol. Now, what happens is uh, we do not only choose pixels that have exactly the same hue saturation value readings as the pixel we're looking for. Uh, we want to keep some certain range between that. Uh, this is particularly useful because since we are working for different lighting conditions, we don't want that because of you know particular lighting uh, that a, a color not be detected, uh, be it in bright light or, or dim light or accordingly. So we want to be have uh, be able to have some flexibility there, and we know that uh, for a, a very similar colors with different brightnesses, the hues are almost the same. It's just the value reading that changes or the saturation that changes. So what we do is we set a range around in and around hue, around saturation, around value, between which if the pixel channels uh, have values uh, within those boundaries, then they will be selected. For hue, we generally have a very small tolerance between 5 to 10. For saturation, it's larger in the order of 100 or so. And for value, it's very large. Uh, anywhere between 170 to 200 is usually a good, uh, uh, a good benchmark for or the good tolerance other for the values now um the how does the algorithm work the first part is similar to the bgr algorithm we 
create the resultant image, we convert the input image into HSV. Then we cycle through pixel by pixel and here what we do is, we know for HSV, uh, hue is the channel number 0, saturation is channel number 1 and value is channel number 2. So we check that the value of the hue channel is between uh, or rather is in between the value of hue plus minus hue tolerance. So we check that it's between hue minus h tol and uh, rather is greater than hue minus h tol and less than hue plus h tol. So the value has to be uh, between uh, hue plus minus hue tolerance. The same goes for saturation plus minus saturation tolerance and value plus minus value uh, tolerance. So if all three of these conditions are satisfied, then the corresponding pixel in the resultant image will be made white or 255, otherwise it will be made black. So it's again, it's quite simple to understand how this works. Now what we'll do is we will run a program using this function and see how it works. So we'll first get rid of the previous function here. I've already commented out and kept here for convenience the main function that will use the hue saturation value function. First we've copied this, then let me just uncomment this. This is the pr main function that uses the hue uh, saturation value color detection function. Again, we'll be, we'll be loading a different image this time, but we'll also be looking for red again. Again, through trial and error, we had found out that uh, the hue saturation value readings for the kind of red we're looking for is 179, uh, 178 and 254 respectively. Uh, and the tolerance is good, to uh, good set of tolerances were 8, 108 and 207 respectively. So this is something we found by trial and error. Uh, and let's see how it works. Let's run the, let's build the program first. The program is built. Now let's run it. Ah, see here. We're looking for red. This is a, f a very, you know, uh, very accurate and very, you know, comprehensive color detection. It's just gone after the red portion and has left the other portions almost uh, unaffected. There's no uh, noise anywhere. There's no. There's not much noise. There's not much uh, uh, mixing with other colors, interference from other colors. So this is a very nice uh, means of color detection. That's HSV. So uh, that's why uh, you can you understand the importance of HSV detection when we are checking in between two ranges. It's uh, very useful and very convenient and efficient also to use this particular method. Now, so that is basically the gist of the two major color detection algorithms that we use. Uh, generally, the second one is more popular for um, for the robotic applications. Now, these are just the functions of the algorithms that we discussed. Uh, we'll be uh, also demonstrating uh, a much more general form of color detection in the sense that uh, in the previous two examples we knew from before what certain values, certain thresholds were going to be, certain tolerances were going to be and we based it upon that. But in real life applications that will not hardly ever be the case. We'll have to monitor, you know, alter our program based on the values or the readings at that point of time. So uh, to be able to do that we will be discussing a slightly more generalized form of color detection but before we do that we need to understand the concept of track bars track bars in OpenCV refer to basically sliders uh, which is an instrument uh, provided by the high gui toolkit it allows us to you know uh, control certain elements of a window certain dynamic elements of a window now uh, the it can be used for uh, if we're loading a video showing a video for example can be used for going to different parts of the video or it can be used for um, you know uh, for changing the value of a variable which affects the output image that is being produced continuously and it is that concept that we shall use for color detection uh, before that to create or implement track bars we need the cv create track bar function uh, the parameters are something like this the first parameter is the uh, let's just go down here the first parameter is the name of the uh, window or the name of the track bar rather the second is the window in which you want the track bar to appear the third is a pointer reference to uh, the address in memory of the variable whose value we want to change. The next parameter is the upper bound that the value can take so the slider cannot take us beyond that and the final parameter is kept null. So uh, that's basically the point of a track bar. What we'll be doing is uh, if you recall we had also discussed another concept called mouse callback wherein if we move the mouse over a window over a particular specified window and we execute certain mouse events a particular feedback or code is sent to the program and uh, if we can attune it for left button click then we can get the coordinates of that click um, and, and utilize them accordingly 
so we'll be using all these concepts to demonstrate to you a more general form of color detection what will happen here is we'll take the input uh, video feed from the video in this case then uh, we will hover with the with the mouse po mouse pointer we'll hover around in the video feed to look for a particular color and we'll click on it and that will uh, give the hsv values of that particular pixel so you see here we do not need to know from before uh, what the hsv values of that particular pixel uh, of the, the hsv readings of that particular pixel are because our, upon our clicking on it when we get the values of that coordinate we can easily refer to the actual channel values of that coordinate in the original image in the hsv image and that is what we'll use to uh, basically uh, do our color detection if you have a look at the main function uh, we're assuming that the color detect hsv and the mouse callback functions are all understood since they have been discussed before now if you have a look here at the main function uh, you find that the video feed is taken from the camera each frame is captured one at a time callback is enabled so that the coordinates are sent when a left click takes place now uh, what we have is we have track bars for each of the tolerances. This is where the tolerance comes in. So we have the hue saturation value and we'll be monitoring the hue tolerances, saturation tolerances, and value tolerances using track bars. And based on that, we'll be fine tuning the program, fine tuning the function and continuously displaying the image again from the frame. And uh, every time the change made to hue tolerance, saturation tolerance and value tolerance will be reflected in the next uh, displaying of that particular frame, uh, which we are doing time and again. Uh, the code is it's pretty uh, obvious from the example. After the callback has been enabled, we've got we have initialized, or rather we get the readings of the HSV uh, from the the uh, HSV equivalent image, hue, saturation, and value respectively. Uh, we set the tolerances to zero. Then we create track bars for them. Then in the infinite loop, we keep on showing frames taken from the video feed and at the same time we detect uh, uh, using uh, HSV color detection and we show the binary output image also before moving on so and then once as the demonstration will show in, in a few uh, in a few moments we can manipulate and get different values for uh, for what we're looking for right so uh, let's have a look at how this works we'll be taking video feed from the webcam of the computer that is connected to the computer and we'll be looking for certain things there. So let's just copy this and paste. Let's just build this. Let's see how it works. Now, if you uh, once you see this, you understand how it's very efficient, how it works quite well. So we'll be switching on the camera feed. Just wait for it to start. If you have a look this is a yellow book which is what you want to detect so uh, first we hover around the mouse, mouse pointer and we click upon the pixel you're looking for ah and now you look the uh, the hue tolerance has been uh, the hue tolerance saturation tolerance and value tolerances have been shown so let's move this a bit make this something like say seven or eight saturation we can move up to something like a uh, hundred or so or at least tentatively a hundred and you see, as, as and when I'm moving the slider uh, along, uh, along the track bar, the, the things are changing. And now, now you see it, it becomes very stark, the contrast becomes very obvious. Now if we raise the tolerance for value, it becomes very, uh, you know, it becomes very obvious that it's just, even my fingers which are uh, holding uh, on the side of the book are not even detected at all. It's just the book that is being detected. We can fine tune this to some extent if we, and now if you see if I move around with the, uh, play around with these values, the, the ac accuracy and the efficiency of it is changing. Now the text uh, that you can see uh, becoming faded and out is not actually yellow. So we would prefer that that not be detected. So we'll reduce the saturation tolerance a bit, increase the value tolerance. And now if you turn this book around, similarly again, you can see the book's name is the Feynman Lectures on Physics, by the way. So you can see that the other text is almost visible. Only the yellow part, uh, the part of this book which is yellow, can be seen. And uh, the more, and again, if you if you if you change the 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 hue tolerance, and also that will that will make it uh, difficult to uh, detect. So now, what happens is, you see how uh, generally we can fine tune to an almost perfect value. This is an almost perfect value of tolerances which ensures that nothing but the yellow book is seen. So if I take the book out of sight, now almost nothing is visible in the camera. And again, if I move the book back here, then again, this book is visible. 
So, and uh, this is the generalized form of color detection and it is the form of color detection that you'll be mostly uh, likely to use in your uh, robotic simple robotic applications because you'll need to threshold you need to set good tolerances based on the time of day based on the ambient lighting uh, based on what the robot needs to accomplish at that point of time and thereafter uh, having done this then they uh, then you can start the execution of your bigger program which uses these values or these thresholds uh, for application or for execution of a particular task and so that's that with that we come to the end of this tutorial thank you